Hi, and thank you all so much for joining us. I'm Rita Cote. Today I've been given the distinguished privilege of introducing a very special guest. Now this lady is an actress, producer, dancer, and choreographer extraordinaire. She continues to be one of the industry's most versatile talents, and we are so excited to have her here with us today. As you can see, I'm just on edge with her being up here in our presence. So ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Mrs. Debbie Allen. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Rita. I'm sorry. You okay? Okay. Okay. So just tell us a little bit about yourself and how your interest in dance got started. Well, first of all, I'm here for the International Black, Black mm -hmm. Film Festival of Nashville, which Miss Hazel Joyner Smith has worked so tirelessly with her daughters to make happen here. And I think it's very important that as black people, we do what we can to understand the business, the industry, and reclaim our image. And so we're talking about a lot of things. Uh, the world of dance is how I started and it has got me into all these wonderful things that I do now um, out of the dance world and certainly out of the world of academia. I went to Howard University and you were always um, encouraged you know as an artist to really be well versed in many different aspects of world life, literature, art, politics um, and coming up at Howard University in the 70s where the expression black power came into being was a very volatile and very expressive time for all black people in America where we were just reclaiming the sense of our beauty and the sense of our culture and so all of those uh, dynamics really helped shape and define and color who I am today so today coming out of the dance world I've become uh, one of the most hard-working directors in Hollywood. I'm cultural ambassador for the United States. The State Department sends me around the world to represent American dance. I've been to China, India, Beirut. They're trying to get me to go back to the Middle East now. Um, I'm an artist in residence at the Kennedy Center, where I've worked over a decade creating vibrant new musical theatrical productions for family entertainment. Um, I direct some of the most popular and uh, well-liked uh, television series historically and now. I, you know, started on Fame, directed Family Ties, redefined a different world which tripled the enrollment of historically black colleges, uh, did Quantum Leap and a lot of different things. Uh, directed the pilot of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I'm in my resume chat, please. Too many things. Um, was artistic director of the Academy Awards for a decade, 10 years. I did it 10 times, which is probably the longest uh, run anybody's had doing that job. So I'm still um, quite uh, an advocate of arts education in the public school system right now, being that we're going into an election year, I'm giving a lot of voice. I'm on the President's Committee on the Arts and Humanities, which is a nonpartisan kind of uh, committee, although mostly everybody is Republican, it's okay. Um, <laughs> I go and I become the mouthpiece for young people who don't really have a way to speak. Someone has to speak for them to try to change the educational system in America, which I view as a dinosaur that needs to be strangled and reinvented. Um, so I do a lot of things in the world, and I have a dance academy. And Tell us about the dance academy. The Debbie Allen Dance Academy in Culver City is seven years old now. I have world-class masters. The director of my academy is former prima ballerina of the Bolshoi in Russia. I have a uh, master's from the Kirov in Russia, from Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater in New York, from the west coast of Africa. I've created an opportunity for young people that um, is so meaningful because it's something I didn't have. Uh, I finally got into the Houston Ballet Foundation. I was the first black student at that uh, academy. But it was very difficult for me to train as a young person. And I didn't want any young person to have those barriers. Um, so at my school, 
I don't care what your ethnic background is. I don't care what your physical size is. One of our best dancers, Ashley Fan, is a little chubby girl who is the best dancer, who was the best dancer at school for a long time. Um, just the heart and soul of dance. And we're trying to train a new generation of um, creative human beings. They don't have to stay in dance, but that character education through the arts will define them in principle as they become who they are in the world, if they're working at the post office, in the public school system, if they become the next uh, Quincy Jones or Bill Gates, it will uh, define them. So tell us a little bit about, you know, since you have, you wear so many hats, you know, producing and directing and acting and all of that, how do you still stay focused? on you know family and you know being a woman and you know taking care of yourself since you know there are so many other things mm -hmm. to do well it's hard to uh, really focus on myself as a woman I would say that's the part that gets the most neglect Child, the nails need to be done I need a little <laughs> massage you know or just a little rest uh, I'm working at a pace that's uh, you know uh, not unprecedented but it's uh, a real challenge and I just know that as many things that I have on my plate, I can only eat one of them at a time. So I have a lot of things that I'm trying to grow right now, but I have to deal with them one at a time, you know. So I will leave here today and on the plane ride home. I have a text that I will read. When I get off the plane, I will go into a meeting with my staff. Tomorrow I have a big board meeting. Saturday morning at 8 o'clock, I'll be teaching my acting class. That's another hat. Um, you know, I just take everything on. In, you know, I have to be kind of organized. That's the thing. you got to be a little organized. But the woman part of me does suffer a bit. You know, I would like to have a little more time for myself. And I'm actively involved in my children's lives. Um, my son is away in college. I call him every day. He says that's very gay of me to call him every day. <laughs> trying to get him to stop talking like that. Um, my daughter is in Europe. She's starring as Anita in West Side Story. I will go see her on New Year's Eve in Paris, which will be really exciting to see Vivian. So how important is you know, the arts in the lives of your children? And I know it's so important to you, but how do you show them you know, the beauty that is in the arts? Well, you know, they've grown up with it. so. It's not my children that I'm so concerned with. It's other people's children. My children have grown up with uh, John Biggers coming over to the house eating yellow grits and paintings of Charles White and various artists and the sculpture of Ed Dwight in their house. They've grown up understanding that it's really more important to buy a painting than a car. If you can fall in love with the art, it's really a better investment. You know, get a real cheap car, buy a great painting. Mm -hmm. um, they, um, they've lived that life with me, so I'm just really probably more concerned with other people's children where that is concerned, trying to share that, uh, that sense of expression, connect that sense of uh, mind-opening artistry, which really is a way, a conduit to creativity. And that's something that America really has to keep strong. In my travels around the world, I can see where we will be dwarfed by the Chinese in the textile industry alone. You know, when you can go to China, you can get the same pantyhose you spend, spend like $5 here for that you get for 25 cents. It's getting ready to happen. You can't stop that. But it's a matter of creativity. So if America can re-invest uh, in education as it really needs to be, you know, education today needs to be more of a conversation, not just memory lane, the way it kind of used to be. That education was des designed for the Industrial Revolution, which is over now. We're in the computer age. There's a new language called the computer, and every child in America needs to speak it. And every school in America doesn't even have computers, so uh, we have a lot of work to do here.